I think the title, Martin, is at the centre of people's awareness of what Elgar did. But of course, he wrote many oratorios when he was a young, unknown composer. And then the explosion of the dream of Gorontius came. But even before that, he'd had an idea of writing a piece, a big, big, dramatic, visionary piece about who the apostles were. And this started when he was really quite a young man. And it was a dream come true, but he got behind. He got nervous. He didn't know what the words should be. He couldn't quite decide. Uh, his datelines were coming. And so the pressure built up on him and he never quite finished what he'd originally dreamt of doing, which is an incredible thing to say because what he has done is leave us with two great masterpieces. The Apostles is longer, more grand in scale, involves more singers, more soloists than the others. It's a more complicated narrative as well to get your hands on. And I have a feeling sometimes that it's like like a, a film, you know, when you cut quickly from one scene to another. And that, you need to study it a bit. You need to be in his world to understand it. I think another aspect about it that is, has been very important to me is that it shouldn't be too pious. What drove him to this subject was not to tell again the story of Christ's life and death, but it was to try and explain in sound and poetry who these men were. They were young men. They had no tutelage. They had no broad education. They were fishermen. And uh, they had to start on a new life and they were nervous. And I think he was interested in trying to say that for a very broad Christian public. Um, the Dream of Grantius was criticised for being so Catholic, being so Roman. I think the focus of the drama is about struggle. And I think that's why the role of Judas is so important. And his treatment of Judas is very difficult for us to understand now unless we get the theological approach that was around a hundred years ago and that made such an influence on him because I think he identified with Judas. And Judas's final suicide when he realizes that his dreams haven't come to pass and that he's actually overstepped the boundary, that he's been guilty of hubris and intellectual arrogance, not betrayal in that traditional sense, Judas, you see, loved to, to converse with Christ uh, on the same intellectual level. They loved having discussions. He loved tussling intellectually, which in a way the other fisher, young fishermen weren't up to doing. They just asked questions and tried to learn and realised they were dealing with somebody exceptional. But Judas was from the city. He wasn't from the country. And he wanted to try and get Christ to show himself. And the theory is that the organisation of the arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane was a stage-managed plot by Judas to encourage Christ to be forced to demonstrate his supernatural power and break the chains of his arrest. And of course, Christ said, what is happening is just what was meant to happen and you're just following on from what was prophesied so many years ago. And so Judas realises his terrible area of judgement. And that suicide was something that Elgar tussled with too. This is not something that's so generally known. Mm. But he was so lost in his own faith. Superficially, he was a Catholic because his father played the organ in the Catholic Church. But his tendency, it seems to me, was more to be Anglican. And he was, lot, he was caught between the two. And, and I think he was very, very confused. But all this is in the music. That sense of insecurity, that sense of elation, of knowing that he could cope with the big picture, that his variety, his maturity as a composer was second to none at that time. And the other thing that's so interesting about the work is that right until his death, he conducted it a lot. Many people were perplexed by the way he told the story. His publisher, Nimrod of the Enigma Variations, said to him that he thinks it's the greatest choral work since Messiah, i.e. that in the retelling, as Handel did, of this very familiar story. Um, he has managed to create an atmosphere that no one else has even thought of doing. He chose all the words you see from different parts of the Bible and you go from one book to another book um, without knowing quite where you are but being driven along by the pulse of the music. And I think that that moved people. I think everybody was aware that it was a great work but that it wasn't immediate. A good performance of Gerontius, not the first one which wasn't good, but the second, third and fourth ones, which were much better, spoke immediately to people and they saw the journey.
that he wanted everybody to go on. In the Apostles, that's not quite the same thing. It doesn't happen as easily as that. You have to think about it, you have to absorb it, read the words perhaps, uh, before really appreciating the extraordinary scale of what he's done.